Hello and welcome to another edition of The Front Page here on GNAT TV. My name is Andrew McKeever, the managing editor of the Manchester Journal, and I'll be your host today. And today it's my pleasure to have with us in the studio Mr. Bruce Lisman from Shelburne, Vermont, has traveled down here to be with us today. And uh, Bruce, welcome to GNAT TV. Thanks. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we're, we appreciate you making the time to come down and talk to us. Uh, Bruce Lisman is the founding partner of Campaign for Vermont, which is an advocacy group for, uh, that's addressing several important public policy issues here in the state. And um, I guess my first question, uh, Bruce, is, is what, what led you to form the Campaign for Vermont, and, and what are your general goals? Well, we were fairly recent. Um, we really went live uh, uh, the week after Thanksgiving. I uh, was talking with friends, uh, two in particular, and talking about the issues that confront us uh, broadly and the state in particular. And in our conversation, we said, you know, shouldn't we, considering all that's happened in the last four years and the profound change that's taken place amongst us and around us and the fabric ripping events, uh, mm -hmm. shouldn't we think about different priorities for our state? And that led to a, a more interesting conversation. We decided to form Campaign for Vermont simply as an advocacy a group for good uh, uh, ideas. And uh, it's not partisan, it's not connected to a party, party affiliation, conservative and liberal. Things don't matter a lot to us. What we care about a lot are our ideas. And so mm -hmm. we're advocating on their behalf. And as you know, we're advertising and writing op-eds and really trying to engage debate. Mm -hmm. If there were a robust two-party system, uh, maybe they would do it. If, uh, but we don't. Uh, no whining. We elected a mostly democratic uh, government, mm -hmm. legislature and governor. And uh, uh, we thought that's an opportunity, really, to present our ideas in that, if you will, void, and uh, to create a debate. And that's what we're after. Okay. Well, um, you say it's nonpartisan. I mean... Uh I guess, I guess one question that comes to mind is, is if you want to achieve a certain outcome on one of the several important areas uh, the state is confronting, whether it's uh, economic growth or taxes or uh, energy issues or whatever, um, isn't there inevitably going to be some kind of conflict or clash of different opinions and awfully, often strongly held opinions? And uh, that's how you sort all that out as to how we wind up with wherever it is we're supposed to wind up? Well, yes. A uh, good debate, uh, a healthy debate, is one in which uh, we both have well-informed ideas. We're prepared to debate them and uh, even push each other back and forth and ultimately settle on the right path. That's a good debate, and that's what we're trying to encourage. So we're not a lobbying group. Uh, we don't support candidates. Our notion is uh, really a simple one. Mm -hmm. uh, we think the big idea that we should pursue as a state is creating a a vibrant economy, a dynamic economy, a diversified economy, not only by what, it, what, what businesses do, but where they do it. And uh, we think that is a solution for so many things that ail us, uh, uh, drug abuse in our communities, uh, domestic violence, uh, uh, crime generally, uh, have replaced uh, jobs and opportunity for jobs. We think we can, it'll partially solve that, but also create a broader, bigger revenue base for doing the things the state would like to do. It's a big idea, uh, and the best time to plant a tree, of course, was yesterday, and the best time to start building a bigger, a stronger, more dynamic economy is today. And that's our, if you will, our unifying idea. Okay. Well, let's uh, drill down through a couple of the big issues that are facing the state and ones that I know your group has already spoken to and, and commented on. Um, why don't we start with the state budget? Uh, sure. We started off when the legislature convened early in January um, with about a 40 to $50 million shortfall, I guess, after some initial reshuffling of figures. Um, this is a perennial question that the legislature seems to be confronting, at least since 2008 anyway. Uh, what, is, what is your feeling or the uh, feeling of your group that how we should close that? Should we be primarily looking to rejigger taxes in some way or increase taxes or should we be focused first on trimming back spending? Well the good news is the economy is recovering albeit uh, in a sporadic kind of way but nationally the the numbers keep getting better and, and you know the jobless numbers are better and uh, here too uh, where the economy wasn't 
you know, really wasn't broken, but it, it was bent, and that's recovered nicely. Mm -hmm. Unemployment rate is into areas that uh, at least look reasonable, if not, if not good. And I think that'll help both uh, tax uh, receipts and uh, the diversity of tax receipts. Uh, I think the, uh, there are a couple of interesting things that have already happened. Uh, the governor in his budget address didn't speak about health care. Uh, and he didn't spend any time on alternative energy, two of his big uh, initiatives, mm -hmm. worthy of discussion how they fit into a, a budget. Uh, but he had already, in, in last year's session, had taken, in, in essence, $27.5 million away from the education fund, a transfer from the general fund to the education fund. Mm -hmm. The outcome of that is the legislation that, that, that is being worked on today, I presume, which is an increase in the statewide property tax which, as you know, supports the, our public education uh, mm -hmm. system. Uh, that's a consequence which will help uh, solve the budget deficit, but, of course, you'll be paying for it. That's one approach, and maybe a different and better approach might be to look at our priorities and reconsider, because the other big idea we have uh, is one in which the government would treat us as functioning adults, would re-inject accountability into a process by not only telling us where our tax dollars are spent, but how well they're spent. In so doing, would enable you, uh, maybe just a casual observer, to figure out if the money is well spent. And that, of course, gets to other issues around tax uh, reform and the willingness of those who do pay taxes to pay more. If so if you knew your money was well spent, then your inclination is to say, if you need money, you can count on me. If you don't know, if it's kind of a dark wall there in front of you, it's hard to say. What well, you say, here they come again. Mm. That, that's not a good uh, structure. So are other big ideas, transparency in government. Right, okay. Well, speaking of taxes, I mean, there's been an ongoing debate for a couple of years now about whether or not Vermont's tax rates are um, discouraged or provide a disincentive for uh, affluent folks to either come to Vermont or to grow businesses in Vermont and then sure. stay here in Vermont. Um, I know Governor Shumlin has frequently said that he doesn't want to raise broad-based taxes as a way to balance the budget or to put the state on a sustainable spending track. Um, but uh, I guess, first of all, do you think that that's realistic? And, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly, do you think as we look at the state's tax code, uh, should we be trying to make it more progressive than it already is? Or should we maybe be trying to kind of lower those marginal tax rates a little bit? I don't think taxes alone uh, reflect either business climate or, our, or the willingness of people to live in a place or have a business. I think it's one of probably many mm -hmm. uh, uh, themes that kind of string together. Maybe the last and most important or the first and most important, it's hard to say. I, I take him at his word that he doesn't want to increase broad-based taxes, but of course the statewide property tax is as broad-based as you get because right. it affects all of us, whether we own a, uh, our homes or own a business or not. If we rent, it's going to impact us. So, and of course, the tax on uh, health care providers is something. If we go to a doctor, you're paying more. If you go to a hospital, it's their higher taxes were passed through. So it depends on definitions of statewide property tax. But I think he was talking, therefore, about... Uh, income taxes, mm -hmm. it's pressure to raise it to fill that budget hole. Others who say we've, we're taxed enough, I, I take him at his word uh, that that's what he intended. The Blue Ribbon Commission on Tax Reform uh, that was populated by three very talented, uh, hardworking people came up with a set of reform ideas that I think, uh, speaking for myself and Campaign for Vermont, we found them attractive only because it provided terrific clarity. The simpler a tax system is, well, the better it is. If you mm -hmm. can see it, then it's probably okay. It's where you can't quite understand it, can't quite grasp it. Where there are so many deductions, uh, uh, it makes the system seem unfair, even if it is fair. So we'd, we'd embrace some of their reform ideas. It doesn't sound mm -hmm. like it's on the front burner of, no. of reform today. Yeah. And I think uh, taxes generally should reflect not only this issue of fairness, but what you really want is, of course, to broaden the base. Right. And that means a broader, bigger middle class, mm -hmm. e back to economic opportunity. What's the best way uh, to get out from underneath the issues around poverty is to have a job that will pay you more. 
And so jump into the middle class, and from there, you know, of course, America's all about some upward mobility if you want that path. Mm -hmm. I should have mentioned to our viewers at the start of our show that, that you, you've come back to Vermont after a, a very successful career in the business world elsewhere. And I, so I, I think you're the perfect person to ask this question. It is, what is the best role for the state government to do in terms of promoting economic growth? We hear about this all the time. And I've, I've asked this question to just about every person who's involved in this question I can think of. But, uh, I mean, there's so many different uh, theories on that, like whether or not it's, it's tax-based or, or there's something else that the state should do in order to provide some kind of uh, incentive, I guess, for companies sure. to come here, provide jobs, and, and, and boost the economy. I mean, assuming you, you think that the economy of the state of Vermont needs a, a boost, which I think a lot of people would agree that it probably does, but... Um, I mean, is there something from your perspective and, and from your background that you think, you know, here's what the state ought to do, or, and here's what the state definitely should not be doing? Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of dividing line between the two? I think there is. I think there are things we can do, and I think first we have to decide that's something we'd like to do. You know, I think there's a case to be made that in the last uh, 25 years, uh, our state's leadership has spent the benefits, the proceeds, if you will, of a strong, long economic expansion nationally and they spent the proceeds in building out a robust uh, uh, a social safety net and uh, but maybe didn't spend enough in building the elements of a strong economy thus a campaign for Vermont saying I think we should change we should change our priorities I think uh, first a consensus decide that's what we want to do uh, but second uh, you know, we're not, we don't ever talk about economic development in a small sense of, here, take a dollar and move to Vermont. I think that's, a, that's not a relationship. That's just a bribe. Uh, I think it's, frankly, bad for uh, the citizens and a bad way to go out and attract uh, companies. Though money is a part of it and tax benefits are. Uh, we'd prefer to build a relationship with you over some period of time. And when the moment is ripe, ask you if you'd consider expanding your presence in Vermont or or, or have an opportunity to move here. Mm -hmm. To get there, though, I think you have to have a point of view that says Ver Vermont would like to do, have a stronger, more dynamic economy. Consider this. Uh, we're in a part of the state that's, that has a, a thinner economic uh, uh, economy, if you will, than the part that's around greater, the greater Burlington area. It's as if a saw were coming out of the sky, sawing off the southern part of the state, and that was before uh, Hurricane Irene struck. Mm -hmm. It did its damage, but other things over a long period of time. Think about it this way. Five governors in a row have said at some point during their tour, jobs are our number one priority, to which I would say, well, how do you think they've done so far? And the answer is, well, we've done okay in a static kind of sense, but southern part of the state is, northeastern part of the state are in some fashion, have troubled economies, older population, our workforce hasn't grown in quite a long time. And so that opportunity to do economic development in a small sense is, I think, built on a foundation where we do lots of things. So we could consider engaging in a true discussion about Act 250, preserve what it's supposed to do, protect the environment, but also give it transparency. So when you engage in it, you know what the outcomes are, viewed less as a simple challenge and a burden and more of a partnership. Here's what we want to accomplish and here's how we'd like to do it. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, the legislature is dealing with issues around health care reform and alternative energy and the statewide property tax, public education. Those are critical aspects to what our future are going to be. We believe in health care reform. Most of us believe we ought to reform the system. For gosh sakes, it's a system that it not only has inflation built in, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to us. We're in favor of it. Where, in this case, we differ from the governor and the legislature is the nature of the reform. It's so true with, uh, also true with the statewide property tax. We have uh, good ideas about what we ought to do, and we offer them as constructive alternatives. Okay. Well, following up on the health care uh, reform question, then, I, I, there's been a, lot of, a flurry of activity yeah. in Montpelier in the last week or so around whether or not we're going to... Uh, or the governor wants to continue on a quote-unquote single-payer plan path 
I, I, I realize it's not technically truly a single payer plan, but it's, it, uh, that term has been used to describe it. Um, it looks like they're, they're starting to make some adjustments in, in how they're going to get to that goal. I, I guess, um, what, is, what does your group favor or want to see? Do, do, would you like to see a, an exchange uh, as mandated by the federal legislation come into being that allows many different insurance providers to have a opportunity to sell insurance to, uh, to Vermonters, or should it be more limited to the one or two players, which I gather is the, was kind of what they were aiming for initially, it sounded like anyway. Sounds like. Well, it's a good question. It's a complicated subject. I'll try to make it simple. We, uh, the, the, the Federal uh, Affordable Health Care uh, Act is got some interesting aspects. The most interesting is indeed this idea about creating a robust exchange. And it's a neat idea for a couple of reasons. One is, at the, at the mandate was that it should be a function of choice. So if you'd like to be in the exchange, if that's where you find the best products for you, for your employees, or simply for yourself, then that's the place to go. If you find it outside of the exchange, that's okay too. We've chosen a path in which we limit choice We've said for the latest adjustment is for employers of 50 or less, you're going to be in the exchange. Mm -hmm. There's no option outside the exchange. At the moment, they've chosen a path, as you point out, a limited number of providers. And if we say that it's merely a step toward a single-payer system, then we probably aren't, aren't going to have a lot of providers wanting to come in, though I think other states have chosen a different path. I take the governor at his word. Though he talks about a single-payer plan, he's also said, if we can't finance it correctly, then we won't have it. And if that's true, then we shouldn't dead-end our process by having a health care exchange that is limited to just a couple of providers. Mm -hmm. It's a shopping mall where you're supposed to buy uh, insurance. It isn't a common pool, and it isn't a single-payer platform. It's merely a place where you can go, find additional providers, and under new federal guidelines, be comfortable in the product you're buying. Or if you don't find it there, then go off the exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We think that's a good idea, but we also think uh, more focus on wellness programs. And companies that are on those, uh, you know, on the ground wellness programs are having terrific success at bending the curve because they have a healthier, much healthier group of employees and spouses, and children too. And ultimately, of course, if we had a perfectly healthy uh, a group of people, our health care bills would flatten out. Right. Well, as you say, it's a very thorny and complicated subject. Complicated, We could yeah. probably spend quite a long time talking about it. But, a couple uh, more hours, easy. <laughs> yeah, right. well, let's move on to the alternative energy uh, piece that you also yeah. referenced there a moment ago, and I, I saw that you, uh, your organization issued a statement on it. Uh, it. Sounds like you're in favor of alternative energy, but with some caveats built in there. Um, can you talk about, about that, where you, where, where you folks see uh, the state should be going in terms of alternative energy because that's one of those things that sounds very attractive, sounds warm and fuzzy. Everybody thinks it's a great idea to get uh, electricity from wind or solar. Well, I mean, folks, I guess, living near Lowell Mountain may not. Depend, but, uh, depends where you are. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it, the, the problem is that it's also more expensive, at least at the moment, than traditional forms of fossil fuel or nuclear energy. And you may wish to comment on where we're going with, with nuclear as well. Um, so how does the Campaign for Vermont view our energy portfolio going forward? Are we on a good track, uh, or should we be exploring something different? We like the idea of a diversified portfolio of energy in our portfolio, and nobody uh, wants to give money to countries that would support efforts to kill us, mm -hmm. or, and none of us are in support of things that create a big uh, current account deficit that impact our deficit. And uh, nobody's uh, in favor of relying on just one thing or one thing that might do damage to our environment or change the climate. Uh, but uh, there's a cost to anything. So the administration put out, a, I think, a vision plan on what it imagined our long-term energy portfolio should look like. It's no more than a vision. Uh, I'm not sure it was well-written. Uh, I don't know if it was well-researched. Mm -hmm. uh, but the outcome is legislation moving us toward a high component of alternatives in our portfolio. Like Ninety percent by the year yeah. 2050 or something like that. Yeah, hang on. Uh, so uh, at first, uh, natural gas, of course, is the cheapest uh, mm -hmm. thing out there. And though it's, of course, a fossil fuel, it's 
uh, uh, less dangerous than, than oil, in a, in really, in a literal sense. And it's not easily accessed here because uh, only certain communities are tied to a gas pipeline, but mm -hmm. we ought to think about that and, and how, of course, our elect where ele electricity comes from, which uh, should be, broadly speaking, a diversified portfolio, including natural gas. The other thing is, so, you know, we say this a lot, in America you can have anything you want providing you're prepared to pay for it, even if it's the dumbest idea anyone's ever heard of. <laughs> Just, if you want to spend a trillion dollars to turn the world upside down, take a shot at it. But you're going to pay the bill. We're okay with an alternative energy package that is bigger than what we have today over some period of time, providing two conditions are met. First is this notion of reliability. When you flip the switch on in the morning, in the bathroom, you don't want to think about it. You just want it to go on. Flip it, lights. Reliability means uh, not intermittent energy. It means energy that's available all the time, which is how nuclear became part of our portfolio, and natural gas and petroleum and other things, good and bad. The other component is we think you ought to know what it's going to cost you. So if your electricity bill is $50 a month today to, uh, uh, for your house, you ought to know at 70% it's going to cost you, say, 150 And at 90%, maybe $300. Meanwhile, the cost of storing intermittent energy is exceedingly high because the technology, frankly, isn't there. The trouble with solar is that it's generating electricity or energy only in the daytime or only when snow doesn't cover the platform and, of course, only when the turbines, the, mm -hmm. the wind is going. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so the question of storage would double the cost of it. Better to have a, uh, an analysis that would enable us to know the cost of reaching our goals. That's a plan, not a vision. And the difference is fairly profound because it's you who is going to pay for it or, or me or, or people watching this. It's a, so here's a good example. Uh, uh, Central Vermont introduced... Uh, uh, public service introduced uh, cow power. Mm -hmm. It's a terrific idea. Uh, it's a great idea. Help the farmers and would enable us to have yet another source of alternative energy. 70 or 80 percent of their clients, when polled, said yes, they'd like to be in the program. But when they saw the price, which by the way wasn't so significant, only 3 percent signed up and of course now it's down to 2 or 2.5 two percent. That isn't to say they made a bad decision. They made the right decision for them when faced with a price hurdle. I think that shows that people expect a choice or at least more information, and that's mm -hmm. what we're in favor of. Okay. I'm going to try and squeeze in a quick question on, on related to natural gas. Um, earlier, a few weeks ago, the legislature uh, indicated they would like to pass a bill that would ban fracking, the process yeah. that would extract right. natural gas from shale formations. Uh, it's being used widely now in New York and Pennsylvania and other parts of the country, uh, put a moratorium on for three years while the issues, I guess, around uh, water contamination are sorted out. Uh, do you think that that was a good idea, given, given the fact that, as you say, natural gas is very abundant, it's relatively cheap, and would be a, at least a bridge source of energy to the renewable nirvana that may lie ahead 20 or 30 years from now? Um, a wise decision there, or was that the legislature kind of being preemptive? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're going to have to drill here uh, to have enough natural gas to supply us for 100 years or so. There is that much, and it's shut in, and prices have dropped again, mild winter, and just so much natural mm. gas around. So I'm not sure there are people pointing toward us, but maybe that's a good idea, considering our sensitivity around uh, uh, the working landscape, and not only what we look like, but how we feel about what's around us. I'm not sure that's a bad idea. Uh, like the other part of the original bill, which would have included a view shed uh, before we put up wind turbines on top of mountains. Mm -hmm. So not just your town would have the vote, but all the towns who might see the. Uh, the truth is, uh, uh, we might want to reconsider where we place wind towers and wind turbines because uh, I don't. If, we, if someone said they wanted to put in uh, uh, a, clear, a clear path, a mountain, we would say, no, we just don't want that to happen. But that's what we're doing in order right. to put wind towers. It's a complicated issue. Uh, we probably were wise in saying, why don't we learn more about fracking? Okay. I don't think you have to stand by and see a pipeline going through your house. 
So final question then would be, what are the next steps for the campaign for Vermont? Where do you uh, folks see yourselves moving next? Are you going to continue to sort of be watching the legislature and monitoring what they're doing and commenting where, when appropriate, or, or is there another game plan in place beyond that? Well, good questions. Uh, let me just say that we are so much uh, further along than we might have guessed. If you'd asked me how many people I thought would be on our website, I'm not sure I would have had a great answer when we started after Thanksgiving, but it might have been maybe in a year, let's have 500 people really care about this. Right. It was more than 6,000 on it, wow. a couple hundred on Facebook. Uh, and so that tells you that we have touched some level of discontent in the state or maybe low-grade anger about things are looking for people looking for ways to articulate issues that are on their minds but have jobs to do or things to do or they've tried before and haven't been heard before. So flush with, I think, success more than we might have imagined, we're going to continue to advocate for our ideas. Our audience is less Montpelier, more outside of Montpelier more people who care about what's happening in their community or have big questions about health care or big questions about alternative energy or question the impenetrability of the statewide property tax system mm. or why it would go up when their school boards are, are holding a line locally. Mm. And for those who think uh, uh, that we should have a strong economy and should start focusing on building it so that the economy is, is, is dynamic, not just in the greater Chittenden County area, but in uh, the greater Rutland area, the greater Bennington area, or Brattleboro, southern part of the state and the central part of the state, we think there's a big audience for it. We're going to just keep pushing ahead. All right. Well, we've been talking to Bruce Lisman today. He's the founding partner of the Campaign yes. for Vermont. And Bruce, thank you so much for coming down and uh, talking with us today. Really appreciate that. And thank all of you for listening and watching today. Uh, again, you've been watching the front page here on GNAT TV. My name is Andrew McKeever. It's been a pleasure being with you today, and we'll see you the next time. Have a good day.